We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. All of us together are continuing to take steps to increase the pressure uh, on Russia, as well as uh, taking further steps to give uh, the Ukrainians um, what they need to defend themselves against the Russian aggression. The now or never moment for Putin is here. After three weeks, the war in Ukraine is entering its most critical stage. With negotiations going nowhere, Putin must capture Kiev in order to force a diplomatic settlement in its favor. Russian troops are moving towards Kiev from four different directions, with their most advanced units just 15 kilometers from the center of Ukraine's capital. Two million people, half the population of metropolitan Kiev, have already been evacuated. Kiev said to be heavily fortified and prepared for the coming Russian assault. But whose war is it? Is it Russia's war on Ukraine? Or perhaps it's become America's war on Russia? Would Ukraine have gone this far without the support of the United States? No one knows how this war will end and which side will prevail. We can only guess what the world will look like the next day. Hi, I'm David Wu, a former Wall Street global macro strategist with 20 years of track record of making actionable predictions of major global trends. Welcome to part one of Money Game, where I take on groupthink, propaganda, and conspiracy theories in my critical analysis of markets, politics, and economics. In today's video, I will discuss the two main possible outcomes of the battle over Kiev and what each of them means for the war, the world, and for you. I will analyze both scenarios from a loss game perspective and argue that neither Putin nor Zelensky will be the ones casting the decisive votes on which of the two scenarios will be realized. With the support of heavy artillery fire, Russian forces take control of Kiev. As the Ukrainian defenders run low on food and water, France and Germany steps in to mediate a ceasefire. Negotiations over ending the war follow. Ukraine agrees to adopt constitutional neutrality and recognize the independence of Donetsk and Luhansk as demanded by Russia. In exchange, Russia agrees to withdraw all its troops immediately. The EU agrees to accelerate Ukraine's EU membership application process. The international community makes generous monetary commitments to rebuild and reconstruct Ukraine. The peace agreement is signed in Berlin. Sanctions against Russia ease. Financial markets react positively to the end of the conflict. Oil price retreats to $90 a barrel. The world stock market goes up 10%. The euro climbs against all major currencies. Investors breathe a sigh of relief. The global economy avoids a recession. All is quiet on the Western Front. The siege of Kiev turns into a bloody protracted battle with mounting casualties on both sides. Putin takes Kiev only after several weeks of heavy fighting, but only to discover that Zelensky and all elected Ukrainian officials have decamped and are setting up a government in exile in Poland with backing from the US and Europe. This leaves Putin with no one to negotiate with on terms of a surrender. Putin installs a puppet government with no legitimacy and gets no international recognition. Putin is forced to keep his troops in Ukraine to prop up the new government. This gets very expensive very quickly and exposes Russian forces to guerrilla warfare mounted by the increasing Ukrainian resistance. Meanwhile, the US and Europe continue to tighten sanctions against Russia. The Russian economy collapses with double-digit inflation, shortage of everyday goods, and massive job losses. Tightening of sanctions sent commodity prices even higher. Oil price jumps to $150 a barrel. The world stock market goes down another 10%. The euro declines against all major currencies. Within six months, the world is in a new recession. The, the, the challenge is this. Uh, Vladimir Putin uh, continues to, uh, to press this aggression. Uh, that's why I say I'm afraid this could go on for, for some time. But uh, it's going to end, and it's going to end with, um, with Ukraine prevailing. To predict which of these two opposing scenarios will play out, we have to first ask ourselves, which country will have the final say on the end game and what it stands to gain from each outcome? In my view, it will be the US that will determine the outcome of this war. If you look closely enough, the fingerprints of the US are all over this war. Ukraine has been the largest recipient of US military aid in Europe over the past five years. Ukrainian forces are fighting with US money. U.S. training, and U.S. arms like the Javelin and Stinger missiles. 
In case you haven't heard, U.S. Congress just approved another six and a half billion dollars of military assistance last week for Ukraine. One has to be naive to think that Zelensky would have gone this far, allowing the total destruction of his country if he did not have assurances from Washington that it will have its back. The U.S. is the biggest backer of Zelensky. I'm going to assume that this means Washington will call the shots as to whether there will be a deal with Russia. So which of these two above scenarios will be preferred by Washington based on a careful cost-benefit analysis? The upside of the first scenario is that the U.S. economy avoids dangerous stagflation, the combination of slowing economic growth and rising inflation. The downside of the scenario is that Putin gets what he wants. From the U.S. perspective, not only this outcome of the war will strengthen Putin on the international stage, it will send a message to all other countries like China that aggression is awarded. It would weaken the U.S. rule-based order for the world. And from a domestic political point of view, Biden's approval rating will most probably suffer, costing the Democrats the midterm elections. Uh, that's why I say I'm afraid this could go on for, for some time. But uh, it's going to end, and it's going to end with, uh, with Ukraine prevailing. What about the second scenario? The clear downside of this scenario is its effects on the U.S. economy. Inflation will worsen, forcing the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates quickly and raising the risk of a recession. Many Americans will lose their jobs. However, a new survey shows that a large majority of Americans support the ban on oil import from Russia. Biden may view this as a mitigating factor in terms of the political risk of any economic fallout. But what does Washington stand to gain from this outcome, which is surely the more destructive one for both Ukraine and Russia and for the global economy? For the first time since the end of the first Cold War, this outcome would deal a serious blow to one of America's most formidable enemies, setting Russia's economy back by 20 years. This will send a strong message to the world to not to mess around with America's rule-based order. By weakening Russia, the U.S. then can devote all of its resources to counter a far greater threat to the U.S. domination, China. And all of this can be achieved with U.S. economic might alone, without putting a single soldier on the ground. Biden, whose approval rating has already moved up since the war began, might think that this outcome of the war could help him turn the tide in the midterm elections. This war started as Russia's war against Ukraine. I think it has slowly morphed into America's war against Russia. Putin said a month ago that America is goading him to go to war. He might have been right about that. Blinken said again last week that Ukraine can absolutely win this war. I think we should assume that he means what he says. I hate this war. Everything about it disgusts me. To really understand what this war is about, we need to go behind the images of suffering and destruction and remember the famous saying by the military theorist Karl von Clausewitz. War is just a continuation of politics by other means. If you got something out of this program, please hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to watch the second part of this program in which I discuss my investment strategy, given this and other macro themes via stock, bonds, and currencies, please come visit us at davidwuunbound.com. Thank you for listening.